Hello and welcome! Today I just wanted to encourage you to start a garden. Whether you're using containers or flower beds for growing fruits, veggies and or flowers, it's a great idea and here's why. Planting fruits and veggies will provide food for you and your family and therefore save you money. It's a great stress reliever and provides light exercise. Also, flowers beautify your area, they attract birds, butterflies, bees and other wildlife which help to pollinate them, thereby giving you the said fruits and veggies that you're looking for. Today I will be showing you step by step how I plant some green beans and squash. In six weeks I should have green beans and will reap three crops this growing season. Remember to like, share and subscribe for future topics. So here we have our seeds. We have some green bean seeds and that would be the brown ones right there. And we have some peas. I may not be doing those today. And we also have some squash seeds. And the ones that I'm gonna plant are actually some from a previous crop because I really like those. But I'm just showing you the packet of what it looks like. You also need to have a trowel. You need to have one that's really sturdy so you can dig in and you know, it just is very effective, gets the work done. And in some cases you may need to have a cultivator. You don't have to, because you can even use a trowel for weeding, but this actually it helps when the weeds are younger. You just put it in the soil and rake at them and they come up very easily. And of course, you'll need to have your bed, unless you're using a container or containers. And your watering can. And you will need to have your soil. And this is the one that I prefer, but of course you can use whichever one you choose. I like the organics more so for when I'm doing food. For plants, I'm not as fussy about it. So back to the beds, looking at the edges, you'll see I have an edge in here. This one is actually um, made of plastic that you can get at your local garden center. And it goes down like that, as you can see there. And you just basically stick it in to the ground when the uh, when it's moist preferably after like you get some rain or have watered it very well so it goes in easily so that's the more inexpensive option and I'll show you on the other end if you have wood or you can make it for yourself the raised beds or if you can go to your local garden center they'll have a lot of choices there Costs a little bit more but Bear in mind it's an investment because you can use them year after year and here you'll see um, you'll also need to have some maybe tomato cages if you're planting tomatoes, beans, peas, any one that has fairly light stems because once they start to produce the fruit they'll need that little support and they have different sizes for those. You also have the option to use a trellis or you know a few trellises depending on how many you're planting and they have different sizes for those as well. And here you'll see that I have some stakes, inexpensive, they're made of rubber, and pretty effective. Once the plant starts coming up, you can just use like yarn or something that's fairly delicate and flexible to tie them onto it. So that's as far as what you need to have to get started. So um, what I typically do is to plant the squash towards the end of the garden. So that way it has space and it can run because it runs a lot. It has long vines, so it has freedom to, to run as much as it wants. And sometimes I'll need to pull it back a little bit so it doesn't run all over my yard. And what I usually do first is to dig the hole, usually about an inch or so. And then I just drop about three seeds in there and cover it back. And then about right here, I'll do another set, right here, and just cover it over. And then of course I'm going to water that afterwards. It always helps when you plant them just before a good shower of rain. Now you'll notice here that I have some flowers here, and it's good to have these because these help to bring pollinators to your garden and you definitely want to have pollinators because they're the ones that get the fruit to be produced when you plant your vegetables or your fruits. This is actually salvia. 
So next we are going to be planting our beans, our green beans. And I'm going to start right here. So based on the size of the seed, you probably go down about an inch or so. And I typically um, put three of them. I look for three decently sized seeds relative to the typical ones. And just drop them in there. And they'll space out, you know, when they're coming up. So that'll be fine. So we had one here. And then what I do is I stagger them. So I put the next set here. And three more in there. So there's one here. There's one here. And there's going to be one here. Put three more there. And of course, if you have any gardening questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. So we have one set here, one set here, one here. Now we're coming here. And this is just to give them enough space so they're not competing for food or sunlight, as well as that they're not too clustered so that way they don't get diseases. So that's that next set. And then here we go. Three more. There. Cover them over. Sometimes you may come across an earthworm. Don't worry about them. They're actually aerating the soil, meaning that it gets better um, ear movements in the soil. Because the roots do need to breathe. So don't worry too much about them or any other little bugs that you might see down there. Just be careful that it's not anything dangerous. Otherwise, you should be fine. And we're going to put three more there. And bear in mind too that whenever you plant crops, um, you typically want to do them maybe for up to three years. After that, you will want to switch them out. You know, if you like certain types of vegetables, you want to switch them out so that the soil gets a chance to replenish itself. Whether you're putting food or not, you still want to switch them around. So you could maybe try tomatoes another time or peppers or something like that. So we'll put them in the soil now. And sometimes you can put labels on there too if you might forget what you planted until they come up. And our next step is to water them. We're going to water the pumpkins that we have put here. If you have a large area, of course, you may want to use your hose for efficiency. But if it's a small space like this or if you have containers, then this typically is okay. Make sure you give it a good soak. I'm watering flowers here. You can also try marigold too. Those are inexpensive and they're pretty good at you know getting the pollinators in your garden. You're gonna come through and give it a good soak. And feel free to go back if you need to. And what you want to do is to water them, give them a deep set of watering three times per week. Maybe in about a week to 10 days, depending on the temperature in your area, you should see them coming up at that point. And when they get to about this height right here, that's when you would put your cages over them. Your cages or trellis whichever of those you might have used so it's gonna help so initially you don't have to put those in yet but once they start coming up and you can see where they are then you'd put that in there 